The first decade of the 21st century at Wright's High School brought the highs of state championships and the lows of classmates lost in war. America was changed on September 11, 2001, and the tragedy of that day would take its toll on Wright's as well. Ultimately, the Twin Towers fell, but America's resolve was strengthened and the war on terror began. The country had a strong feeling of patriotism following the attacks on 9-11, and many had a desire for revenge. Many young men and women from Evansville decided to enlist to do their part to ensure the safety of the rest of the country. The war would first come home to Wright's High School on April 29, 2005, when news came in that 2003 graduate Darren DeBlanc was killed in Iraq. While serving in the Army's 14th Infantry Regiment, DeBlanc was killed at the age of 20 by an improvised explosive device that detonated near his dismounted patrol. The death of Darren DeBlanc would bring the war to the west side, but nothing would prepare the Wrights community for the tragedy that was soon to strike. On Sunday, October 15, 2006, Wrights alum Brock Babb was killed while serving in the Marine Corps in Iraq. Babb had served in the first Persian Gulf War in 1991 and felt the call to volunteer again after the 9-11 attacks. Babb graduated from Wrights High School in 1984 and was an active alum. He was a member of the Wrights Wrestling Booster Club, the Big Blue Boosters, our Men's Club, and the West Side Sportsman's Club. Babb also volunteered as wrestling coach for both Wrights and Teacouple Elementary and as a commissioner of the Evansville Junior Football League. His son Tanner was a sophomore at Wrights the time of his death. He also had two other children, Zoe and Levi, who were in middle and elementary school. Ten months later, on August 17, 2007, Wrights alum Will Powell was also shot and killed in Baghdad, Iraq. Powell graduated from Wrights in 2005 and enlisted in the Marines following graduation. He was only 21 when he died. The war in Iraq and Afghanistan left deep scars on the west side. In honor of the fallen veterans from Wrights, a memorial was placed at the closed end of the bowl in 2008. The construction of the memorial bench and plaque were the senior project of Tanner Babb and Connor Houchins. While Wrights suffered losses, Wrights also had many triumphs throughout the decade. The 2000s were a decade of revival for Wrights football. Under new head coach John Hart, Wrights finished their 2001 season 6-3. No one expected Wrights to advance deep into the postseason, but the Panthers managed to make it to the sectional championship against the highly ranked Castle Knights. When sophomore kicker Daniel Woods hit a field goal with four seconds left on the clock, the Panthers pulled off a 16-14 upset to clinch Coach Hart's first sectional title. Wrights continued their success by winning regionals against Bloomington South, but their journey would end after the semi-state game against future state champions Ben Davis. This season would reinvigorate the Wrights football tradition, and over the next five years, the team would win three more sectional championships. Although Wrights had been successful the past six years, nothing would compare to their 2007 season. It had been 36 years since Wrights had claimed a state title, and Hart wanted nothing more than to end the state title drought. With a mature team led by seniors Paul McIntosh, Zach Campbell, Craig Austin, Chris Dyg, and Houston Hobbs, the Panthers believed that they could return Wrights football to prominence. As the 2007 season began, Wrights had no trouble finding success. Wrights would dominate the city and finish the regular season with a perfect record. That success would carry over into the postseason, where Wrights would claim their fifth sectional title in seven years. Going into the regional game, the Panthers would face their first real challenge, Columbus East. The Columbus East game, held on a Saturday afternoon at the Bowl, would go down as one of the most memorable games in Wrights history. Although Wrights was the favored team, Columbus East was also known as a powerhouse in Indiana high school football. Led by Wrights old coach Bob Gaddis, Columbus East had finished the regular season with only one loss. The game would be a hard-fought battle, but Wrights would still prevail, making the final score 61-60. to After a close game against Columbus East, Wrights would travel to Cathedral High School in Indianapolis to continue their journey to the state championship. Cathedral, led by future NFL tight end Jack Doyle, had been favored all year and looked to bring the Panthers' season to an end. As the fourth quarter wound down, the Panthers would find themselves down a score. As Cathedral attempted to run off the clock, many Panthers fans believed the game to be over. 
until a fumble was forced by Chris Dyg, giving the Panthers the ball. With 38 seconds left on the clock, quarterback Paul McIntosh would lead the team down the field to score, giving Wrights a one-point lead with little time left in the fourth. Down by only one point, Cathedral still had a chance to leave with a victory. The last play would be a long pass caught by star player Jack Doyle, who caught the ball near the goal line and dove for the end zone, but was called out of bounds. The game ended with a final score of 35 to 34, with Wrights winning semi-state. After the victory against Cathedral, Wrights would play in their first state title game since 1977. The game would be played in Indianapolis at what was the RCA Dome against Lowell High School, who had only one loss for the season. However, the Panthers were able to dominate the Red Devils and bring home the program's 10th state title. Although 2007 would be Hart's last season on the Hill, the winning tradition would continue. In 2008, Tony Lewis, a former Wrights assistant coach who was coaching in Wheelersburg, Ohio, took the Wrights coaching job. Lewis would carry on the tradition by finishing the 2008 season with a 9-2 record. The following season, Wrights looked to return to Indy for another state title. Led by players Matt McIntosh, Jeff Hudson, Alordo Bell, Kuda Demet, and Mike Clem, the Panthers were heavily favored and would find little opposing competition during the regular season. Going into the postseason undefeated, Wrights looked to continue their success. The Panthers would make claim to a sectional championship with ease, allowing only two scores. Wrights would then go on to defeat East Central and Indianapolis Cathedral, making it back to the state championship game. The state game would be at the new Lucas Oil Stadium. Wrights would play Lowell High School for the second time in three years for the state title. Although Lowell was a talented team, the Panthers' relentless defense and Coach Lewis's high-scoring offense would overcome the challenge. With the final score ending at 23-9, the Panthers would claim their second state title in three years. Although football drew the largest crowds during the 2000s, Wrights also had much success outside the bowl. Throughout the decade, girls' soccer was dominant, winning five sectional championships in 2002, 2003, 2006, 2008, and 2009. The girls' soccer team would have nine winning records in 10 years. Many of the all-time scorers played during the decade, such as Keisha Malone, Stephanie Thompson, and Carly Farabach. Led by coach Jeremy Wolf, Wright's girls' soccer experienced many successes as a team, but also saw many of its members go on to play at the collegiate level. The most accomplished individual athlete of the decade was swimmer John Schmidt. Schmidt's junior year ended with a second place medal at the state swim meet. As a senior in 2005, John Schmidt was a state champion in the 100-yard freestyle and the 200-yard freestyle, making him the 13th individual state champion in Wright's history. After graduating from Wright's, Schmidt would go on to swim for Purdue University. Boys track also made a name for themselves by winning a regional in 2000 and another sectional in 2006. The track team also had some individuals that medaled at state and earned all state titles. Juniors Randy Bays and Michael Weber earned all state honors in 2005. The following year, Bays, Weber, and the 1600-meter relay, including John Schmidt and Darius Thomas, also medaled. The 2000s were a successful era for Wright's wrestling, as the team sent 21 wrestlers to state throughout the decade. The highest individual achievers at state were Billy Haywig and Alex Johns with third place finishes. In 2000, Haywig placed third and Johns finished third in 2008 and again in 2009. Ryan Lux, Nathan Jones, Brian Kuhn, Zach Campbell, and individuals such as Billy Haywig also achieved all state honors during the decade. Wright's speech team had been one of the top teams in the state in the previous decade, and the winning tradition would carry over into the early 2000s. The team would win state in 2000 and would continue to have many successful individuals throughout the next several years. Some of these individuals included Paul Musgrave and Margaret Au. Paul would be named All-American and Margaret would go on to become a national champion. The team was led by coach Brandon Cosby until 2001. And when Cosby left in 2001, Susan Marianelli would take over and continue the successful tradition until 2005. The following years would be a time of numerous coaching changes. In 2007, Corey Crowell became coach and returned stability to the team and began making regular appearances at the state finals. Throughout the decade, Bright's Theater put together many entertaining productions. Director Amy Sakura would take on the task of producing the classic musical Grease, which would be remembered as one of the community's favorite productions throughout the decade. The decade of 2000 to 2010 saw a succession of many band directors. Kurt Weimer followed David Smith as director in 1999. Weimer led the band until 2004 when Greg Keith took over. 
In 2008, Dwight Emmert came to rights to lead the choir, but also took on the band when the director left unexpectedly. In 2006, EVSC technology specialist Terry Hughes had the idea to start a history technology class. Hughes partnered with Wright's history teacher, John Carl, to carry out this project. The class would be devoted to preserving history through the use of technology. Feel the History, as the class would later be called, would create many historical videos and would be recognized on a national level. The class would receive awards like the Magna Award, which is an award given by the National School Board Association. As the first decade of the 21st century closed, Wright's football was back on top, girls' soccer was a dominant presence, and the music department was poised for a resurgence. Going into the 10th decade, Wright's was stronger than ever and continues to play an important role on the West Side. This has been an F.J. Wright's Feel the History production.